Hi guys. Well, so here we go. Let's move on to the next unit. Uh, I haven't been posting a lot of videos for you guys yet. There's really only been the one. There's going to be a whole bunch of them to come now. Uh, if you look at the schedule as it was supposed to unfold for us, we were going to be together for the same three hours a week for still up until this week and next week. And then for the following three weeks, we were going to be together for a full eight hour day. So I kind of, I have to admit that I've been, been focusing my attention on some of my other courses up to this point, trying to get them um, moved along where they need to be because they need to be done by the end of this week. Um, I'm now going to be focusing quite a bit more on you guys and there's probably going to be lots of these videos to come in the next little while. So, so time to, uh, time to really settle in and get through um, a good deal of material here in the next short while. Now what I've learned as I've been struggling through all of this is that I cannot upload a video that's greater than 10 minutes long. So I'm going to try very hard to keep the videos to about 7 or 8 minutes. Which means it might take 2, 3, 4 videos to get through a single PowerPoint presentation. Um, so I'm going to hit on the highlights as we go and, and please send me emails and questions along the way. There are exercise sheets that accommodate or accompany this work and so keep working on the exercise sheets. Make sure that the, that the material is making sense and you're getting the right answers. If not, by all means, fire me off emails. I'll, I'll do what I can to bring you along either through email or additional videos for everybody, whatever it is we need to do. Okay, now to start off, here we go. We're talking about conductors and I'm gonna let you know that so far I've been lying to you. Okay, great, thanks Dave. Actually, just very recently, okay, I said that in a parallel circuit, in a parallel circuit, the voltage is constant. So if this is a 10 volt power supply, then we will see 10 volts dropped across that resistor and 10 volts dropped across that resistor. Right? That was what I told you and that's the way we've been doing the math. And we did that very much on purpose because it keeps it nice and tidy and easy. Okay, but nothing is that simple unfortunately. And now it's time for a bit of a reality check and we need to complicate things more. So here's the problem. And we did, I hinted at this back at the beginning when we talked about what is current flow and we talked about the bump theory. All right, free electrons striking valence electrons and breaking them free of their orbit so that they could move on to, to uh, bump the next electron from the next orbit and so on and so forth. Well, the thing is that all of that requires energy. Okay, and so what it means is that a conductor offers resistance. Okay, there's no such thing as a conductor which is a perfect conductor Okay, the conductor itself offers resistance, which means there's no such thing as just a simple parallel circuit. It doesn't exist because this wire right here offers some resistance. Granted, not a lot, but it definitely does offer some. And so what we have to do is we have to recognize that there's a resistor there because the conductor itself, that piece of wire that we use to build the circuit, offers some resistance. So the same is true here and here and here. And the fact of the matter is if we want to get carried away and we're not going to go this far, but, but there as well, right? And there, Okay, now we're not going to do the math on that. That's getting really carried away, but, but unquestionably that's true, right? So there's no such thing as a, a parallel circuit. Okay, if there's 10 volts here, there's not 10 volts there. Okay, maybe, maybe there's only 9 volts by the time we get there. And then because there's more resistance, maybe there's only 8 volts by the time we get here, and so on and so on and so forth. And the further we get from the power supply, the more this is true because we offer more resistance to get there. Okay, so that's kind of getting to the end right away. Let's back up a step. Okay, 
but these conductors offer resistance. We can't get away from that. All right. So if we look at the PowerPoint, which I've provided you guys with yesterday, it says that there are four factors that determine the resistance of the conductor. So first of all, it's the type of material. Okay, type of material. And so the idea is here, we talked about the valence electron, right? We said that copper has only a single valence electron. And so the amount of energy required to break it free it isn't as much as aluminum because aluminum has three valence electrons. So we need more energy to get any one of those removed from its orbit, which means that copper is a better uh, conductor than aluminum. All right, aluminum offers more resistance. The conductor itself offers more resistance. So the type of material matters. The length matters. As a conductor is longer, it has the effect of resistors connected in series. So the conductor offers a little bit resistance, a little bit of resistance. If it's longer, it offers a little bit more resistance. If it's longer, a little bit more. Okay, so the length of the conductor, as the conductor gets longer, it offers more resistance. The, the um, diameter is also a factor. Now the diameter works in the exact opposite fashion. So here's your conductor, offers some resistance. If we make that conductor bigger, we have a, has a larger diameter, then it has the effect of connecting resistors in parallel. Well, what happens in parallel? The total resistance decreases because we've offered additional paths for current to flow. Okay, so a longer conductor means that conductor offers more resistance. A larger conductor, a fatter conductor with a greater diameter offers less resistance. Okay, and finally the, the last point, I need myself room down there, sorry. The last point is temperature. Okay, the temperature of the conductor affects its resistance as well. Okay, that is the energy level of the molecules, right? So those electrons orbiting the, uh, the, the nucleus of an atom have a greater amount of energy already if it's hotter. And so less additional energy is required to get it to break free of its orbit. So typically, although not always, once that wire is hotter, it offers less resistance. That's not necessarily true. We'll crunch some numbers and we'll look at that different types of materials, once again, do offer different properties. Okay, so that's a quick introduction that covers some of that first uh, section. Uh, I would very much like to be able to tell you what pages to turn to in the Delmar, but my Delmar is at school and I don't have access to the school. So I sure hope you have your textbook. Um, just a quick look in the index and you can find the conversation about conductors and this conversation and we're going to quickly move into doing some math and you can find that in the Delmar text and work along. Like I say, I've got exercises on Blackboard, um, haven't posted a lot yet, but there will be lots more to come. Okay, watch for more videos guys, they're going to keep coming. Um, we're going to be at this for about another month.